And now if we go to Poliscan and look up the transaction hash we just got, we're going to see the transaction we just made. And if we go to Polymarket and look up our address, we're going to see the, the trade we made. We're going to see how many tokens we bought and for what price. Uh, hello everyone. In this video, I'll guide you step by step on how to programmatically execute a trade on Polymarket using Clop interface. I'll provide a brief explanation on how Clop API works, uh, which allows us to interact directly with Polymarket, and I'll walk you through all the steps necessary to publish a trade using this interface. Uh, throughout the video, I'll reference various resources like Polymarket documentation, the Python Clop client Polymarket provides us, and Gamma API. You can find all the links to these resources as well as the code used an example in the video description below. And without further ado, let's start by getting familiar with Polymarket's infrastructure, which we'll be working with in this tutorial. Polymarket uses a system called CLOP, a hybrid of centralized and decentralized components. It relies on centralized operators to handle trade publication and management. However, when it comes to trade execution, like buying or selling yes or no tokens in a specific market, uh, those transactions occur on chain, based on the instructions you provide to operators. Uh, now, let's quickly go over how we'll interact with this environment. Step 1. Using the private key from our wallet, we'll send requests via the Python client to create API keys in the GLOB system. Uh, this contentious will enable us to create, publish and cancel trades on the platform. Step 2. After creating API credentials, we'll prepare our first trade by approving the use of specific amount of USDC. Step 3. Once the trade request is sent, detailing which token we want to buy or sell, the operator will match it with someone ready to take the other side of a trade. Afterward, an unchained transaction will finalize our trade. Ok, now let's move to the code and start trading on Polymarket. Ok, let's start by creating new as a wallet uh, for trading, but before that, make sure you have host in your .n file in the root of your project. Ok, so let's create a new wallet. Ok, as you can see here, I generated a new wallet, uh, this will be the address I will be using in this video. And you can see that in .n file, uh, I updated private key and public key variables. This is done automatically in the code. Ok, so after creating a brand new wallet for polymarket trading, uh, we need to provide certain permissions so that later we can create trades that the operator can execute. Uh, for this, we will need to send some matic for gas fees to complete these approvals. So let me send some matic to this new wallet. Ok, as you can see on this screenshot, I sent some matic and also sent some USDC token to create trades later. And now let's make the approvals. Uh, you can see my balance here and we are currently making all the approvals, it will take some time, a few seconds. Ok, as you can see I finished with all approvals and the script for generating approvals was taken from Polymarket's GitHub. Uh, the examples they provide use the outdated version of Web3, so I had to make a few modifications to the code they provided. Ok, the approvals are done and we can now start interacting with uh, Clop system. Uh, first, we will need to send a request to create API keys. And once we receive them, we will save them to .n file, same as uh, public key and private key from our wallet. And by the way, in the case keys have already been created before, you can use method get API keys instead of create API keys. But as you can see here, I already created my keys. I have my API credentials and same as private key and public key from our wallet, we're going to save it to .env file. Ok, we generated our credentials to interact with Clop system, uh, let's move on to creating our first trade on Polymarket. First, we need to decide which market we want to trade. We can fetch the list of all the markets from Clop API, uh, but to keep things simple, uh, let's select the market directly from their website. For this video, I've chosen this market. Will Trump administration confirm aliens exist in first 100 days? Ok, we've chosen our markets. Now, how do we make request uh, to buy YES tokens? To execute a trade through the CLOP API, uh, we need to find condition ID associated with this market. And there are two ways to find this condition ID. The first way 
is to use Gamma API. Uh, Gamma API is a service provided by Polymarket and it indexes blockchain data to provide information about Polymarket markets in a structured format. And as you can see in the market URL, you can see the name of this market uh, provided is a Slack. We can take this Slack and make the request to Gamma API to fetch information about this market uh, from the blockchain. And in this information taken from the blockchain, you can find this condition ID. Uh, here it is. But I had some issues with Gamma API. Uh, sometimes it doesn't return the results for certain markets by Slack or by uh, the ID. And because of that, I want you, I want to teach you alternative method how you can find the condition ID directly from website. Uh, if you go to the page of a market you want to find condition ID for, you can open the developer tools, open the network tab, and type holders into filter and you can find the request uh, for holders and you can take this uh, this string this will be the condition ID uh, the market value now what we have found our condition ID for our market we can finally proceed to execute the trade uh, using this uh, ID we'll make request to clop API to fetch additional data where we will find the token IDs for yes and no tokens Okay, let's make a request to Clop API for this condition ID. Uh, this is the code for this request. And let's see the response. Uh, this is the response and information we need right now is uh, tokens. You can see token ID for yes and for no token. Um, and I made this code to extract yes token from its array. Uh, it, it might look a little bit complicated, but I had to do this because I didn't know if position of yes and no token are fixed in array they come. Okay, we extracted our yes token and its ID. Now we're actually going to start uh, filling the order data for our first trade. And for that we're going to take token ID of a token we want to buy. We're going to choose the site, in our case this is the buy. We're going to specify the price for tokens we want to pay. In this case this is 4 cents. And we're going to specify how many tokens we want to buy. And according to the rules of Polymarket, the total amount of transaction must exceed uh, $1. Uh, so because of that, we chose to buy 26 tokens. And that's it. We filled all the required details. Now let's actually send this order to Clop API and see it executed on the platform. I'm going to allow a debugger to run to send this request. And we sent our request, as you can see here, we actually have our transaction hash. Uh, let's look up this hash on Poliscan. And now if we go to Poliscan and look up the transaction hash we just got, we're going to see the transaction we just made. And if we go to Polymarket and look up our address, we're going to see the, the trade we made, we're going to see how many tokens we bought and for what price. And that's all for now. I hope the video was helpful. You can find the links to the project and all other resources in the description below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I'm planning to create more videos about Polymarket in the future, so stay tuned. Bye.